Hello everyone. Uh, so this is the last order under class Amphibia, order three, Sarventia or uh, Anura. The name comes from the Latin term saliens, which means leafy. And uh, we can see that all the members of uh, order Sarventia, they have they have uh, hind limbs adapted for leaping and swimming. So that is how the name has come, Sarventia. And it has an another name, uh, Anura, and the term comes from two root words uh, from Greek, that is an which means without and ura means tape, so without tape. So this uh, particular group uh, of uh, uh, tailless linked amphibians, uh, they have a, a leaping habit, and that is how the names, the names have come. And it includes frogs and toads, and uh, you can see that uh, salient features include, they have naked and scaleless uh, um, and glandular skin, and uh, the um, absence of tail gills and gill slits in the adult unlike the other two groups they they are um, um, even the larval and, and the adults doesn't have any uh, gills and gill openings then we can see that uh, these uh, have uh, the tympanum and tympanic cavity it is present and eyes are provided with eyelids uh, and the nictitating membrane is present especially to in those uh, uh, members which are um, Swimming actually nictitating membrane pro, uh, provide protective covering for the eyes. Okay, and uh, their mandibles are toothless, and you can see uh, fertilization is uh, external, development is external, and uh, metamorphosis it is uh, complete but without any neurogenic forms. Okay, now um, in most of the animals, you can see the fertilization is external and uh, it occurs in water. But uh, however, internal fertilization has been reported from a species from Puerto Rico and many others which lay eggs on land, a few of them. Uh, and uh, a few species of annuals are also reported to be overbeating plants. Okay. Now, the two different genera which you are supposed to learn, uh, it is uh, one is uh, the frogs and uh, I mean under the dots it is the toughness and uh, frogs you have to learn about the rapophores. Okay. Now, actually, what are the differences between frogs and toads? Actually, frogs, they are uh, usually adapted to live in uh, water, this the freshwater bodies, while toads, they are found on uh, moist uh, terrestrial surfaces. And another feature is, you can see in the picture itself, uh, they have the, the toads, they do have a rough uh, or dry skin. And usually, in the case of um, amphibians, we can see that their skin is smooth and highly vascular, uh, thin, uh, and uh, usually moist, and hence it acts as a very good respiratory surface. But in this case, in the case of toads, they have very dry and uh, what you call it, rough skin, and hence the skin is uh, not a respiratory surface. But in the case of frogs, you can see it is very smooth skin. They don't have any uh, such like uh, dry surfaces and hence it acts as a very good respiratory surface. And another feature is you can see the frogs, it is a slim and actually usually smaller in size as compared with tots. Tots are robust and uh, like uh, very large sized uh, uh, amphibians or annurans. Okay. Another is like they just look at the uh, snout region. Here it is rounded, the tots. Um, but while in the case of frogs, usually they have a pointed snout okay. and uh, many other features but uh, we can see uh, regarding the tafrinus and uh, the uh, racophorus the tafrinus it is um, uh, they are true tots considered to be true tots and uh, it is uh, found uh, all over the world except for australia and madagascar and it is terrestrial and nocturnal okay that is another uh, very important feature which uh, differentiates between the, uh, these uh, tots and uh, frogs tots are usually nocturnal they hide beneath rocks or uh, logs and all uh, during the daytime and comes out and they are, they are very actively feeding on uh, like uh, insects or uh, worms and all during the night time. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, frogs, they are usually uh, diurnal and uh, uh, they are active during daytime. Okay. Uh, so that is another important uh, like aspect with which you can differentiate between a frog and a toad. Exceptions may be there, but in this case, uh, in the case of the tafrinus, they are uh, noct nocturnal, and it is, in the daytime, it remains uh, like hidden under stones or uh, like logs and uh, in damp places. The skin is dry and rough, usually having warts, uh, 
you can see on the surface there are certain structures in the protuberances and these are known as warts okay so here in the case of uh, usually in the case of uh, tarts they do have such kind of uh, warts on the skin and they be, these um, uh, warts are provided with poison glands and uh, uh, these um, like uh, usually uh, when irritated these produce certain secretions that makes them uh, like unpalatable or um, usually that keeps away the predators from eating these uh, tots okay now uh, the uh, behind each uh, tympanum uh, just behind the eyes close to the eyes they have a, another uh, gland uh, which is known as a parotid gland it's a poison secreting gland uh, and that is also uh, responsible for secretion of these toxins now hind limbs uh, are long but without any webbing you can see uh, fore limb it is provided with four digits while hind limbs usually with five digits and uh, you, uh, in both the cases you can see that they are not webbed okay and it is usually meant for terrestrial life and tods they have another feature is like the presence of bidder's organ uh, b i d d e r bidder's organ it is anterior it is present anterior to each gonad uh, but uh, in both males and females but uh, in adult females what happens is this uh, reduces or atrophies while in males it uh, is retained it persists even throughout the life in e uh, either sex what happens is this bidder's organ do have the ability to develop into a new ovary uh, as in when uh, like occasions arise that is in case of males if the testis is removed in for any reason the bidder's organ bo both are removed the bidder's organs uh, become ovaries in the male so there is a um, like uh, it becomes functionless and hence there is a sex reversal complete re sex reversal so this kind of a uh, uh, nature is found in the case of the tods the top okay now another example is racophorus they are re uh, referred as a tree tro tree frogs or flying frogs it belongs to the family racophoridae and uh, they are found in uh, africa and southeastern Asia, southeast asian countries and you can see here the uh, as such the uh, what you call the frog is very uh, like thin and uh, like slim and uh, you can see the legs are very long and these long legs ends up in digits and uh, between the digits they have the webbing uh, another important character is the presence of these adhesive pads or discs at the end of the uh, what you call digits okay so uh, these uh, slender body the long uh, limbs and the webbed feet it helps in uh, gliding that is gliding from one tree to another and uh, it also uh, i mean it actually acts like a uh, like a parachute okay so this such kind of a locomotion is known as a parachuting right uh, and uh, this uh, adhesive discs at the end uh, uh, the base of these adhesive discs are provided with certain mucus glands and these glands secrete certain secretions that help them to adhere onto the surfaces upon which they are uh, moving okay so that is a very important feature with regard to the what you call uh, racophorus okay so uh, racophorus uh, the most common species are racophorus malabaricus and racophorus maculatus racophorus malabaricus it is found in kerala and uh, as seen we have seen that racophorus the body is long slender uh, usually female is larger than male okay. and uh, uh, head is broad nearly conical trunk is narrow posteriorly and the waist is slim here you can see so it actually uh, like the width decreases uh, posteriorly and eyes are large and pupil vertical the limbs are long and lean with broad hands and feet four limbs has uh, four digits and hind limbs have five and all digits are uh, webbed for uh, this kind of a movement that is the arboreal locomotion that is parachuting or gliding and uh, they have already seen that they are each of the digits is terminally expanded to form adhesive pads or discs for attachment and climbing and these pads are provided with uh, mucus glands uh, and uh, this uh, helps uh, it produces a viscous secretion uh, that enable them to adhere onto the onto smooth surfaces uh, by way of uh, surface tension okay another important thing is like racophorus do have the ability for uh, like a uh, color change okay. they can change the color rapidly and uh, now, uh, uh, now with regard to fertilization and uh, development uh, fertilization is external it is in water and female uh, what they do is after laying eggs and uh, like fertilization they actually beats on the egg mass with their uh, uh, hind limbs and this actually uh, develops a frothy covering uh, around the eggs and this frothy covering 
covering the uh, eggs, it is known as a nest. Okay, that is referred as a nest. And this also helps them to ventilate the eggs. Okay, so this aeration is provided. Then this uh, forming of frothy nest, it slowly dries up and then uh, it forms a protective covering around the eggs. So this is actually a protective uh, frothy uh, structure in, within which the eggs are being protected inside. Okay, and uh, uh, closer to the hatching time, what happens is the central part of this frothy cover, uh, covering it uh, melts down or liquefies, and this provides a watering medium for the larva. So uh, that is how the uh, like Rhacophorus uh, brings about the development. So we have almost completed the classification, and uh, we saw the uh, that. Uh, the living amphibians, it is, they are divided into three orders. That are the list amphibia, it is divided into three uh, orders, and they are uh, the order uh, uh, Gymnophiona, or the, then uh, Eurodela, and the, what do you call Anula. Okay, and uh, um, under that, we have already studied the examples uh, like for uh, uh, Gymnophiona, we learned uh, Eurotyphilus and Ichthyophus. And the uh, Eurodela, you studied about the salamanders, Amblystoma, and uh, Proteus. And uh, another important feature is the axolotl larva. And under uh, uh, Anura, you studied Bacophorus and Latapus. Okay. So with this, we come to an end about uh, with the classification of class amphibia. The type of species, we will be learning it in the next presentation. Okay. Thank you.